Just look at that. This is the Paintbox Yarns Christmas Stocking, made with Paintbox Yarns Christmas Project Yarn. Or you can make it with Simply Super Chunky if you want a solid colour. You've got loads of time before Christmas. Come and join me and we'll get one made. Can you hear those sleigh bells? We're nearly there at Christmas and you've got one last project to make and this one will probably take you a couple of days because it's in gigantic yarn. And the yarn in question is this gorgeous Paintbox Yarns Christmas project. And from the pictures there, you can guess it's a giant Christmas stocking. Now I'm not gonna be able to get this all onto the camera to show you, but that is the size of the foot. Foot for a giant and then coming up to the lovely sort of top of the stocking with a loop for hanging on the mantelpiece. I'll just bend that up, maybe you can see the foot. There's the foot. So to make this gorgeous stocking, we're going to start off with one ball of Paintbox Christmas Project. It's the candy cane stripe colour. Um, it's 100% acrylic and it's ever so easy to knit, works up really, really fast. If you can't get Paintbox Christmas Project, you can use Paintbox Simply Super Chunky Yarn, which is exactly the same, but it comes in 100 gram balls. So you'll need 300 gram balls of Paintbox Simply Super Chunky in a solid color, or you can use Christmas Project. So very satisfyingly, let's rip that open. So we start by casting on 34 stitches. Now it doesn't matter how you do this, you can cast on your favourite cast on, absolutely no problem. So I'm going to go and cast on and I'll meet you here in just a second. Now we're going to knit our gorgeous Christmas stocking on some nice mighty big needles and so we begin with the cuff of the stocking which is just a garter stitch just a knit stitch rows here which we knit 13 rows of garter stitch now this stocking is knit flat and then at the end we seam it all the way up the bottom from the bottom to the top so if you're not used to making socks or working in the round that doesn't matter because this one is worked flat the first thing I've done here with nine millimeter needles is to cast on 34 stitches and we're going to knit 13 rows. Now in terms of equipment that you'll need two pairs of needles, you'll need nine millimeter needles and you'll need 10 millimeter needles. The other thing that you will need are two yarn holders. You know the little sort of great big pins that you hold your stitches on. At one point we're gonna take some stitches off work on some other stitches and these ones go onto a holder. So you can either use purpose-made yarn holders or stitch holder needles, or you can just put it onto a, a piece of spare yarn. So first thing we do is to knit 13 rows. So let's refresh ourselves with the knit stitch, garter stitch. So you put your needle under, bring the yarn around, Pull it underneath and off. Put your needle in, around, under and off. Let's just do a few more of those. In, yarn around, under and off. In, around, under and off. So that is our knit stitch. So what we're going to do is to work 13 rows of just plain knit stitch, that's the garter stitch, and I shall meet you back here. So we've worked our lovely garter stitch top of the stocking, and now we're going to start working in stocking stitch. We're going to change up and use 10 millimeter needles. So we're going up a needle size, ready for the stocking stitch. So what we're going to do is work a row of plain knitting, and then we work a row of purl. And then we alternate between the two, a purl row, plain row, purl row, plain row, and that's how we do it. So I shall meet you back here. I'm just gonna do my plain row, and then I'm gonna come and do the purl row with you. So we've got our cuff 
And we're going to work in stocking stitch. And here we have stocking stitch, or if you're in the US, you might call that stockinette. And this is how it looks on the right side. And these little Vs that you can see working along, these little Vs are the knit stitches. And if we look inside, these little bumps here are the purl stitches. So you'd always know which side you're on because you either have this showing up, which is the knit side, or you'll have the purl bumpy side, which I'll show you as we get going. So I'm ready to do a purl row now. And I'm going to change needles up to my 10 millimeter needles. And all you need to do for this is just start working with your 10 millimeter needle. And then when you finish with this one, which is the nine millimeter, you just switch over onto the other 10. So let's have a look at the purl stitch. Now, when you do uh, a knit stitch, we know that you put your needle underneath this way and under the stitch. When you work a purl stitch, you bring the needle up into the stitch. So we keep the yarn on the right side of the work. So, you know, when you knit a knit stitch, the yarn is behind. We bring the yarn forward. We take the needle up into the stitch. Then you bring your yarn around the needle down and off. So we go up into the stitch, around, down and off. And we come up into the stitch, around, down and off. Let's do a few more of those. Up into the stitch, around, down and off. Up, around, down and off. And when you get used to doing your pearls, you'll be whizzing along, along your pearl rows. So once you've completed the whole row of pearl, and you can see actually on the other side, it's just, it looks like plain on the front and pearl bumps on the back. When you've knitted your pearl row, turn around and start the plain row. And we're gonna work 27 rows in stocking stitch. That's one row of plain, one row of pearl, one row of plain, one row of pearl. Carry on until you've worked 27 rows and I'll see you back here. So we've knitted in stocking mat or stocking stitch our 27 rows until we've got up and we've landed on a wrong side row. Now the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to work something called the heel flap. And I'm going to show you on the big stock, on the big one here, exactly what the heel flap is. So the heel flap is the little bit of 10 or so rows here at the back of the heel. So here's the heel coming around here. And the heel flap are just these 10 stitches, seven rows of knitted, just worked on those rows. And then we turn the heel, which means you see there's some stitches working its way around here. Then we turn the heel so that we have a curve. So the first thing we're going to do is to create this heel flap. And we start off by purling 10 stitches. So I'm going to put my needle up into the stitch. One, two, nine and ten. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on this 10 stitch needle just two four six eight ten I'm just going to work on these ten stitches and so we're just going to turn the work around and we're going to work just on these ten stitches and work backwards and forwards and knit and purl for ten rows just leave the other stitches on this needle and just work backwards and forwards so there we are just going to work ten rows just do this plain row So we're going to work seven rows, sorry, on these 10 stitches. So when you get to the end of the knit row, just turn the work around. You can see you've still got this gap here. And then we're going to purl back just across those 10 stitches. So we're going to work like this 
seven rows just on the 10 stitches and I'll meet you back after that. Right, so I have knitted seven rows just on those 10 stitches and you can see the gap there where we've just worked on the 10 stitches at the beginning and we're ready for a purl, a wrong side row. And what we're going to do now is to do something called turning the heel. And this means that what we're going to do is we're going to do some decreases along this row and it brings the heel round into a curve. Now when you do this, if you're knitting a sock in the round, you do both sides of the heel at the same time. But because this is a stocking for giants and it's got a seam up the back, we do it in two sections. So let's start with the first one. So the first row, uh, which is a decrease row, we do purl two stitches. One, two, whoopsie. Oh. Now, next thing to do is to purl two together. So I'm just going to take the needle underneath two purl stitches like that and knit them together or purl them together like that. And then I'm going to purl one. Now at this point, we're going to turn the work. Now all of this is written down in the pattern, so you don't have to remember any of this. So we're turning the work inside there. Next thing we do is slip one, knit three. So I'm just going to slip this stitch onto the right hand needle, slip, and then knit three. One, two, three. Now we're going to turn back again. So we're now going to purl three. So I put my needle in, so that's one, two, three. And then we're going to purl two together. Now this is the place where we turned the work, but that's okay. Just put your needle underneath the two purl stitches, the next two purl stitches like that, and purl them together and then purl one. And then we're going to turn the work. So our next one here, we slip a stitch and knit four. One, two, three, four. And can you see this is starting to cause a, a diagonal run. It's just starting to curl around my finger there. This is turning the heel. So we turn around again. So this time we purl four. One, two, three, four. And then can you see this is where we turned the last time. We're going to purl these two stitches together, this one and this one. So put your needle in, purl two together, and then purl one. Now we're going to turn the work again, even though we've only got one stitch on there. And you can really see that turn happening now. If I hold it that way, you can see it beginning to curve. So this time we slip one and knit five. Slip one and then just pull my yarn out there, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Just show you there. Can you see it curving? I think you probably can. I'll show you on the other side, you can see it beginning to curve around like that and then we go back and now we purl five needle in one two three four five and then we purl two together, one, two, purl two together and turn and then 
the last stitch here, the last row of this heel turn, we slip one, slip one and knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Now that is the heel turned. And you can see, I'm trying to hold it so you could see the curve of it there where it's turned around for the heel. Now, do you remember before I said you need a couple of stitch holders? And by stitch holders, they look lots of different ways. But this one is like a great big safety pin. And I'm going to just pop the stitches on there. We're going to take these um, smaller amount of stitches off now and just keep them safe on there. And then I'm going to turn the work around. Now what we're going to do is we're going to snip off this yarn and then we're going to work on the next section. So this little bit of the turned heel is just going to dangle off your work while we do the rest. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. I've snipped off the yarn here. There is our, there's the snip one heel. The next thing we're going to do now is rejoin the yarn and knit across so we can work the other heel. So just reconnect with the yarn and we're going to purl 14 stitches to take us across to the other side. So I'm just going to work by reattaching the yarn there. One, two, so I've just purled these 14 stitches in the middle of the stocking, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and we're going to put those 14 stitches onto another stitch holder. And this will enable us to leave these stitches live, just sitting there. So we've got the heel flap on the stitch holder, we've got the middle stitches on the stitch holder, and now we're going to work on these two, four, six, eight, ten stitches that are left. So we've still got the yarn connected. So we're just going to purl to the end of the row and I shall see you on the other side. So now we're ready to work on the heel flap and the heel on the other side of the stocking. And so what we first have to do is to knit eight rows of stocking stitch for the heel flap like we did over here. So I'll see you when I've done that, just on these stitches. So now we're going to turn the heel like we have on the other side. So we start off, knit two, one, two. Now the next instruction in the pattern says SKPO and that means we slip one we knit one and then we pass the slip stitch over. So I'm just going to lift it with my needle and lift it over the knitted stitch. And that gives us a decrease that leans to the left. And then knit one and turn. Now the next instruction is to slip one and purl three. One, two, three. And we go back to the right side. And this time we're going to knit three and then do a slip stitch passed over. So it's one, whoopsie. One, two, three. And then we slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. And then knit one. And then we're going to turn the work. Our next instruction is to slip one and purl four. So we slip this purl stitch, just take it from the left to the right hand needle, slip, and then we purl four. One, two, three, four. 
and then we turn. And can you see that's already starting to bend over? So our next thing is to knit four. We do one, two, three, four. And then we're going to slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over the knit one. You can really see that starting to curve over now. And then we turn the work around and we are going to slip one and purl five. So we slip and then one, two, five. Turn it back again and this one, knit five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we slip one, knit one and pass the slip stitch over. And then we've just got one more purl row to do and you can see the way that that's turned the heel really beautifully. So turn the work around and then we slip one and purl five. So we've turned the second heel. Right, so here we are. This is, I know it looks like a crazy kind of sock shape, but we've got the two heels here and we're now going to shape the instep in the middle of the foot. So the way we do that is we're going to knit along here, we're going to pick up some stitches along here, knit along here, pick up some stitches and knit along there. So we've got the whole lot on our needles. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to knit these stitches on the heel. So we've got knit along this first bit. And I know this is a big project on a small canvas, it's hard to see, but we'll do each bit as we go. So we knit along the heel. Now we're going to pick up stitches and we're going to pick up seven stitches from here to here. Um, down to where we have the stitch holder. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to the first stitch. So if you look here, so there's the end of our heel. Here's the first stitch and I'm going to put my needle under there and use the yarn. So we're almost using the work as a needle. We put our needle under the next stitch and knit it. So that's one, two, three, four, and seven. Now, when you do this, if you're picking up stitches along the edge and it's a longer edge, it's a good thing to do sometimes to give yourself a marker in the middle and think, right, I've got to do four till this point and four till that point and put pins in. But when it's just a little only a little area. It's the, the pattern says um, seven stitches evenly spaced, but you've just got seven rows there, so it should be easy for to pick up all the way along. Next thing we're going to do is knit these live stitches that are going to come off here. You might have noticed, some of you, that when I put this stitch marker on, I put it sort of, I didn't dip it onto the stitches that way, I slipped it on that way, and that's because I knew we'd have to knit off this, but it doesn't really matter how you've done it. I'm going to knit off this stitch holder. We should have 14 stitches on the stitch holder. Um, so we're going to work along here. And funnily enough, you know, when you're knitting a sock in the round, it's not dissimilar to this. So when if you, if you haven't yet knitted a sock in the round and you want to have a go, we've got a great video for that. Um, it, these, these sort of techniques that we're using are all used there as well. So it might be fun to do it in giant for the stocking first. 
and then try it on a smaller yarn with a sock. Okay, so picking up and just knitting these stitches off the stitch holder. Here we go. That's the last one. So I'll just put that stitch holder down. So now you can see we've got the heel, the heel flap, the stitches that were live. We've come up the other side, so we've now got to pick up some stitches along here and then knit these. So I'm going to do what we did before. Go under the stitch and knit one, two, three, four, five, Six. Just got one more here. Seven. And then you can see I've got these other stitches whoops, on the stitch holder. And then I've got these stitches to knit. So actually I'm going to just turn this around, put the stitches back on, and then I'm going to knit these stitches off the holder. Whoop. So we've now got a very strange looking sock, but we now have the two heels at either end and the instep in the middle. So the eagle-eyed among you will realise that I've also just knitted one pearl row since our last video um, to get us onto the right side, and this is all in your pattern. Now, we have a series of 10 rows coming up that are decrease rows that we're going to bring us forward for the toe of the stocking. They're pretty straightforward. They follow the same sort of format. So I'm going to show you the first couple here. So we start off, we knit 11. One, two, 11. Then we're going to knit two together. So needle under the two stitches, knit two together. Then we're going to knit 14, fourteen, and then we're going to do an SKPO. So we slip one, knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over. So I'm going to slip this onto my right hand needle, then knit, and then lift the slip stitch over the knitted one, and then knit to the end of the row. Now. That sort of formula of working along the line, knit two together, knit a number of stitches, skip, slip, knit, pass the stitch over, and then to the end is the format of the next 10 rows. And you'll need the pattern just to check the numbers as this gets smaller. So I'm gonna meet you at the end of the next 10 rows to show you how we shape the instep and the toe. I've now worked all the decreases, and we've got something that looks like a sort of a strange thing with ears. Um, the next thing to do after you've worked the decreases, and you can see those decrease lines showing there as the sock shaping is coming along, is nine rows of stocking stitch. And at the end of nine rows of stocking stitch, or stockinette if you're in the US, we're ready to shape the toe. So now you can see we've done the shaping of the feet. If I move this up a little bit, you can see almost at the side of a foot here, there's the heel flap, turn of the heel, and this is the side of the foot. And we've got one on the other side, like sort of wings. And now what we're going to do is to decrease this towards the toe. So there are three decrease rows on the right side, which we'll do the first one of those together. And then there's a decrease row on the pearl side and we'll do that one together. So we start off, knit two, one, two. Then we're going to do a slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. So we do slip, knit, and then I'm going to lift the slip stitch over the top. Then we knit eight, one, two, eight. 
Then we're going to knit two together, knit two together, then knit two, and this is coming up to a point of the toe. Then we're going to slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. So slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. Then we're going to knit eight. One, two, eight. And then at the end here, knit two together and knit two. Now, for the next three decrease rows, they are worked the same way as that. Slightly different numbers, but the same way. And then they're followed by a purl row. So I'm going to meet you when I've done the next two decrease rows and purl rows so that we can do the decrease row on the purl side together. As we're coming up through the decreases, um, there are two decrease rows left and this one is done on the purl row. And I just wanted to show you how to do some of these stitches so they might not be familiar to you. So we're going to start off with purl two. Oops, you just shove those along. One, two. And the next instruction is purl two together TBL. Now that means through the back loop. And what we're doing when we do a purl two together TBL is that we're doing the same as uh, when we do um, an SKPO. We're, we're making the decrease go to the left. So when we've got to go through the back loop, that means we've got to go through these two loops. So I'm just going to turn the work around a little bit to get the needle into the two loops at the back. There it goes. Whoops. Just picked up a bit of fibre on the way. And then yarn around as if we're purling and then just push your needle through. And that is a purl through the back loop. We're going to do that again in just a minute. Now we're going to purl two. One, two. Now we're just going to purl two together in a regular way. So I'm just going to put my needle through the purl stitches just up here like that. Purl two together. Then we're going to purl two. One, two. Now we're going to purl two together through the back loop again. So I'm going to bring the needle through the back loops. Just wriggle it through, yarn around and pull through, purl two, one, two, Purl two together, just a regular purl two together, and purl two, one, two. Now if we turn that round, you can see how that's bringing us across both sides into the toe and then this last decrease row so we knit two one two and then an SKPO so slip knit and lift the slip stitch over and then knit two together then knit two one Two. Now another SKPO, slip, knit, and lift the part slip stitch over, knit two together, and then knit two. Now we're left with the way that's decreased straight in for the toe we're going to cast off. So I'm on a purl row, you should be on a purl row at this point. It doesn't matter if you cast off 
in pearl or you cast off in knit. The reason I say that is this isn't a garment that's going to bear very close inspection or be worn. So whichever you prefer and um, cast off these 10 stitches and then I'll meet you back here to sew up. Okay, so now we've finished that decrease around the toe, which is there. And if we fold this in half, lo and behold, a foot for a giant. So now all that's left to do is to sew this all together and to sew up the seam along the bottom. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this with mattress stitch, but you can do it any way you like. Turn it inside out if you want to, um, whip stitch it, over sew it, whatever you want to do. But I think mattress stitch, work, mattress stitch, <coughs> sorry, mattress stitch works really well here. Now, the toe itself, this is another sort of situation. You could, you could do this lots of ways. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sew around a running stitch around the toe and pull it, cinch it in, because I think that's going to be a nice neat toe. So I'm just going to grab my needle and weave it in and out all the way around. Now what I've done here is I've left a really long tail for sewing up. But if you don't do that, that doesn't matter. You can do it any which way you like. So I'm just going to weave in and out of the stitches here. And I'm not doing it right on the end because I want this bit of seam to disappear to make it nice, a nice neat toe. So, stitch all the way around there. And once I pull that in tight, I'm going to tuck it in. There you go, like that. That gives us quite a nice little toe there. Now, mattress stitch. This is one of those things you either love it or you hate it. I love it. It's one of those really fun things to do. Um, if you like sewing up. And what's important is that you're almost enclosing that first set of stitches. So we dig into the stitch there to find the bar in between the stitches. I'm going to go a bit further up there. Pull through. And again, I said, as I said before, I've got this really nice long uh, piece of yarn that I've attached for sewing up. And then you come across to the other side, dig deep for the bar there and pull it to. And I know that having a long, long piece of yarn like this is a bit of a pain at the beginning, but it pays dividends in the end. So over to the other side. And again, you know, this is not a garment that's going to be worn. Uh, well, at least I don't think anybody's got this size feet. Um, this is good, but you want it to be nice and strong for holding all those presents from Santa. And who knows what's going to be in there. I'm doing this quite nice and loosely because I want to show you what happens when you pull it in. Because this does create the most lovely invisible seam. So you can see there my zigzag when I pull this, it just comes in beautifully like that and you can't see where the seam is and that's the joy of mattress stitch. So we work up the seam and you're going to do this all the way up to the top of the stocking. I just I've sewn up all the way down the foot now and I've just got up to our garter stitch top of the stocking the border and I just wanted to mention about mattress stitch in garter stitch. It's just the same. You just need to look for that little horizontal band in between the stitches, in between the rows. And the little horizontal band is still there. So I'm still going to work my mattress stitch to pull it together in exactly the same way as I did. So here I am on the bottom here. I'm just going to dig into the stitch and find that little 
horizontal bar. There it is there. So mattress stitch works just as well on a garter stitch um, band as it does on stocking hat on stocking stitch. Right, I'll see you in a minute for the finishing loop. So once you've sewn in all your ends, you've sewn up the seams, the last little job is to make a loop that we stitch inside the top of the back of the stocking so you can hang it up ready for Santa to come and fill it with gifts. Now, the loop is very easy. It's just very simply made. You cast on 18 stitches, you knit one row and then you cast off and it gives you a band like this. Just a very straightforward little garter stitch band. And then what we do, so we fold it in half and then we're going to stitch it into the back of the stocking. And I'm stitching mine just over the seam. There's the seam up the side that you've stitched and I'm going to sew mine onto there. You know, it doesn't have to be the most beautiful sewing in the world, but you want it to look nice. So I'm just going to thread the needle there and we're going to sew this. I'm just going to sew it together. Just one stitch there. And then we'll stitch this straight over the top of the seam there. Don't do it too far down. Um, uh, too far up, sorry, because you want you don't want it to wobble. So just I would say maybe is that an inch, an inch down, and then just sew it into the seam, and you've got a really strong anchor there in that seam. It's a nice strong. It's already been stitched up the side, so you know it's not going to come undone, and then just stitch it through, and then just make sure you sew in all your ends, so that it's nice and secure to be filled with presents. Alternatively, this could just be a really, really gorgeous cosmetic decoration that never gets filled up. It could just be on your mantelpiece. Or if you know a friendly giant with feet this size, it's a pair of extra socks to keep them warm during the winter. And that is how we make a gorgeous candy cane Christmas stocking. Look at that. So here's my second stocking now. I love making these, they're so much fun. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and this will stay in your family for years to come. Are you gonna make yours in this lovely Christmas project yarn, which is nice and stripey, or are you gonna make a solid color in paint box yarns, simply super chunky? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to know. Have you got any plans to make these? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for lots more fantastic tutorials and lots of fun. So give us a like, leave us a comment and happy knitting.